Hello, my loves. It's Britt here. And in this video, I want to talk about soul purpose, what your soul came here to do. Okay. And everyone's soul has a purpose. There's no, um, no one that's been born, you know, just for the sake of chance or fate or, or something like that. Like you were born with a purpose and your soul knows what it is. And a lot of people, hi, Steven, say hi when you pop on guys. A lot of people are not living their soul purpose, but a lot of people are waking up to the idea that we do have a soul purpose and a reason for coming to this planet and for being here. And a lot more people are awakening, yeah, to the idea that we're here on, here on purpose and we all have a unique individual soul plan for our life. And I don't mean to say like, you know, there's this plan and everything's laid out and, you know, like, um, you, like you have one purpose and your purpose is to like do this one thing. That's not what I'm saying. And usually that's not the case. It's not like you know, your sole purpose is like written out on a sheet of paper and you have to pick like this like thing that's already laid out and it's all like meant to be like you're kind of making it up as you go along in a way. But there are like almost guidelines, I would say, set out to you by your soul. Like and it's not strict. I don't want you to think that your soul is like, you know, this strict um, like parent figure on you. Your soul your soul is not like that. Um, say hi when you pop on, loves. So I also want to tie it back into astrology because I am an astrologer as well. And the north and the south node in the natal chart can really show part of the soul purpose. Well, the whole natal chart really shows the purpose, but I find the nodes to be pivotal points in astrology that represent purpose. And a lot of astrologers say, like, it's the north node that is like the purpose of the incarnating soul. Um, but I don't really see it like that. I see that it's kind of like a balancing act between the North and the South nodes. Uh, hey Jay, B to the motherfucking T. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Matthew? What's up guys? I'm coming to you live in my pajamas, but I will let you think about this. I did have that blue dress on today. So I looked much cuter earlier in the day. And if I would have done my live stream earlier, I would have looked very cute. So I'll just let you picture that in your minds, me wearing that beautiful dress. And trust me, it is very, very beautiful. And um, you would be honored to see me in that dress. But you get to see me in my pajamas. And I'll tell you a little secret. I do not have pants on. So I, I situated the laptop like this so that no one will know. Because I like to keep my life very private on the internet. I don't know if you guys know that. Like, I like to not share any of my real feelings, and I like to keep it very stern and serious and business, business like on the internet. Hi, Gianna. Love you, girl. Um, so, anyways, what was I going on about before I started talking about clothes and pajamas and being pantsless? Um, thank you, Jay. Your many level of beautiful. That's so sweet. You're beautiful too, in a manly way, of course. Um, but anyways, yeah, so every soul has a purpose. So I really want you to know, like, especially in those moments where you feel like, fuck, why am I alive? <laughs> and like, I feel like we all have these moments of like, you know, questioning our very existence. And like, when you understand the meaning, like, of soul purpose, and you understand or sort of have an idea of what your soul purpose perhaps is in those very moments where you start to question things, for, where you start to maybe not want to be here so much. If you have knowledge of your soul purpose, you snap out of it really quickly and you, you come back into your soul knowing of why you were here. And only you and only your soul actually know that. And I mean, astrology is a map of the soul. So like you can hire an astrologer, you can hire me and it would be a very good decision because I'm really good at reading charts. Have a whole shelf of books here on astrology. Um, and I, I'm 
obsessed with it. I've been obsessed with it for years. You can check out my YouTube videos. I've been doing videos for years on astrology. I've been doing astrology since I was 16. And I'm 23 now, so it's been a while. But um, in astrology, there are these points, and they're called the North and South Node. And this is different than your sun sign. So this isn't based on your birthday. This isn't whether you're a Taurus or a Leo. Um, this is the sign of your North Node. And the sign of your North Node is going to really show your purpose in life. And the sign of the North Node is, is where your soul is going and lessons you're going to be learning. Um, and the south node is always opposite the north node. So we have this axis going on in astrology. Or is axes, axis, I don't know how to say that word. But um, they're always opposite each other. And the south node is kind of like what's comfortable. And astrologers call it like, you know, who you were in past lives. Or just, if you don't believe in past lives, even who you are early on in this life. I think most people are, are mostly in their south node, usually till their 30s. Um, unless they're very wise, spiritually enlightened souls, like a lot of the people on Earth now are. But um, usually we spend a lot of time mastering the South Node and like healing the negative traits of the South Node so that we can rise more fully into who we are meant to be shown by the North Node. And um, if you know anything about astrology, there's also 12 houses, so it will show which area of your life your soul is moving towards. Um, so this is really... It's really fascinating to look at. And if you're going to, like, study one thing in astrology, I would say study the north and south nodes. And um, especially in your relationships, if you're wanting to find out, like, is this a soulmate or some karmic fuckery or, or some, like, soul connection, look at the nodes. The south node will quite likely show a past life connection, and the north node will show someone who's helping bring you forward into who you're meant to be. Um, the South Node connection can kind of do that too, because in remembering who you are, you become who you are needing to be. Does that make sense? Do any of the astrology people see it like that? If there's any astrology people on here right now, like, like by being with someone in a relationship or just like hanging out a lot, like friends or whatever, like by being with someone who embodies your South Node, it kind of like reminds you of who you are on a deep level. And then it kind of like, catapults you into where you need to be whereas that's different than a lot of astrologers will say a lot of astrologers will say that the south node kind of acts as a drain and if we spend too much time like with people that are resembling our south node we're going to like go backwards but here's the thing i really don't believe we can go backwards as souls and like just because of like reading and listening to a lot of abraham hicks and they really say like everything is in the present moment. Like you're not recreating some past life trauma. Like you're, you're recreating what's going on in your emotional body and in your energy body right now. Like it's all about now. And like, so I don't really believe like we can be with people who will hold us back. I really think the only person who can hold us back is us. And it's how we use it. It's how we use these connections, whether we, we let, ourselves go where we know we shouldn't really be going anymore or whether we go forward in the direction of our soul's calling or our higher path or our soul purpose or whatever you want to call it um jay says i have a south node relationship that fits that okay like fits like they drain you or fits like it actually helps you move forward even though it's a south node connection what do you mean by that um but anyways, yeah, I just wanted to pop on here because I do not talk enough about astrology lately. I really should talk more about astrology, but like there's so many things to talk about, you guys. Like I sort of went, I go in phases where I'm so obsessed with astrology or so obsessed with theta healing or so obsessed with Abraham Hicks or like, you know, other spiritual teachings or, you know, the soul connection stuff that I do. I really go in phases of it, but I was just really feeling called to talk about this topic of soul purpose and the nodes in astrology. Jay held on too long. Yeah, that can happen, right? But, you know, if you're having a relationship where you're holding on too long, you really want to look at what lessons are you learning or are you not learning? Because if you're holding on, there's something that's needing to be learned and it's not finished yet. And, like, I really think, like, 
when we're really holding on tightly to someone or they're holding on tightly to us, it's because there's something important going on that someone's not quite get, quite like getting because like I've had in my relationships where I was really like holding on to something and then like I learned something like either it was a soul download in my sleep or it was some type of spiritual like wisdom came through through a meditation or through a theta healing session or, or through like a book I read or something shifts and then I'm able to let go but not before them and it's like if you're really having a hard time letting go of some relationship, it's like you're probably still learning or mastering some soul quality of your lessons. And like some examples of what a soul lesson could be is like, you know, maybe you're learning forgiveness and maybe you haven't quite learned it yet. So you're still like, fuck you, ex-boyfriend, hate you. You know what I mean? But like, if you really had learned the lesson of forgiveness, you wouldn't be holding on to that hatred anymore because you, you would have forgiveness. Right? Does that kind of make sense? Um, so I feel you're on to something blending them all together, Jason. Yeah, me too. I think I should write a book on this. I've got like five books going right now, guys. I'm like writing a lot of books. Um, hi mom. Matthew says, where does energy fit into life? Because sometimes it shifts like whoa. What do you mean where does energy fit into life? Well, Life is energy. Like you are a living, vibrating energy being, um, and we all are. And like this is proven by science, even at this point, like with quantum physics and stuff. Not that I've ever really looked into quantum physics, but I know that it like scientifically proves energy healing and energies are real. So I always like to throw that out there, like quantum physics. But I should probably like look into what quantum physics is. Um, I know what it is, but like I should like read about it. Um, I have Mercury in Gemini, and Mercury is the planet of communication and the mind and how you talk and think and learn things. Um, and like, if you know anything about Gemini, it can kind of be the jack of all trades, master of none. Although I do believe I've mastered certain topics. I I do know a little bit about a lot of things, and I could throw words out there and you know reference things and not actually know what I'm talking about sometimes. But then it always like works out. So I'm actually just a genius. And <laughs> it's not even really me talking, it's like me channeling my soul or higher self or God, so yeah. Uh, okay, Matthew says, I mean that sometimes other people's energy affects mine not on purpose, yeah. This is like the common empath dilemma. And here's the thing about that. There are practices that you can do, and I do some, you know, regularly where, like, I say a prayer before I'm going to be around people, or there's the energy break technique that we learn in Theta Healing, where you actually, like, do this energy break, like, before and after a Theta Healing session, and also before, like, an important meeting, or, like, before you do anything, you do this energy break, and it just keeps your energy strong. Um, you can do a bunch of shit like that, but honestly, really what I want to tell you about that is if, like, other people's energy is negatively affecting you. And we've all been there. I've been there. I've lived it. Um, you, you really, like, you can get to this place, Matthew, where you're so strong that it can't affect you. And, like, like you can get to this place where you're not triggered anymore by other people's energy because you're, you're healed. And like, you can like be around their crazy bullshit that they're doing, because people are always gonna do weird stuff that we don't understand. Um, you, you can be able to be around it and still be solid in yourself. And you'll get there. And I'm getting there, I'm, I'm actually pretty close. I can be in a variety of situations. I don't get drained, I don't get drained after clients, I don't get drained um, when I'm out on the boat, you know, shopping, I, I usually don't get drained. There's very few situations left right now um, where I actually feel like someone else's energy is affecting mine. But I do regularly practice techniques with Theta Healing to clear my energy and also, you know, keep my energy strong. So I hope that helped. Jay says, I'll hook you up with a quantum physics lesson or two if you so desire. Yeah, I would definitely be into that, Jay. Um, but like, will I understand it? Is it like really complicated sciencey stuff? I did take science in high school. I took like hardcore science up until grade 12. But it was like, 
it was not like it was like biology so it was about like the body and about like yeah all the systems of the body and stuff it was really cool actually um i miss school school was so cool like i wish i could just oh my god it would be so perfect if like all day i had different like coach course programs like online like as if I was at school like you know at school how you have like six classes or whatever or, or maybe five like in high school it was like English French math gym whatever like what if like in this life I could have like you know this coach course like whether it's like a money-making code to then like work with like a feminine energy coach and then work with like some healing person and work with like an astrology person, even though I already do all this shit anyways, but like, I just love learning. See, that's my Mercury and Gemini. I love learning. I love being the perpetual student. Like I never want to stop taking classes. I never want to stop reading my books. I never want to stop learning. Like you never know everything, but you do get to a place where you want to hop on a video and start teaching people about soul purposes and astrology and stuff. So it, it does happen. But um, wouldn't that be cool to just like, have school like with all the stuff you wanted to learn about every day like but then you wouldn't get any work done you'd be learning all the time well there's a time and a place for everything right I mean maybe like there will be a point in my life where I'm not doing my own type of work and I'm just learning again and then I go back to doing work and then I'm learning and I'm like, you know like I do believe life can be that great um Danny Oliveira says, how does a person know what their life purpose is? Well, your personality might not know. It's your soul that knows, okay? And, like, you'll know what your life purpose is by the thing that you're kind of obsessed with, okay? And, like, for me, I didn't even realize what my life purpose was, like, right away. I mean, I kind of knew, but I didn't really know. But it was, like, I just started buying all these self-help books, and all these astrology books, and I started amassing this massive book collection. And I really thought it was unrelated to anything. Like I was doing insurance, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna take over my dad's insurance business and stuff. And then um, I just started having like, like 500 books about self-help and astrology and healing. And I was like, wait a second, like why am I so obsessed with reading these books? And, watching all these videos and making my own videos and doing these healing courses. And, and then it just hit me. It's like, oh, this is it. This is what I am on this earth to do is teach about this kind of stuff. But I mean, like, and I also don't think like your life purpose has to be just one thing. Like, it's not like, oh, this is my life purpose. And now I have to stay doing the same thing forever and ever and ever. Like, it'll change as you grow. Like, you may be learning valuable lessons from whatever, like, if you're doing some bullshit job right now or, 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 like, something you don't really feel passionate about, you may be learning valuable lessons from that experience. And, like, it's not like you need to, like, make a sudden jump and start doing your, your purpose or whatever. Your soul is very gentle with you. Your soul gently nudges you in the direction of your purpose. And it's never going to be harsh. It's never going to be, like, gun to your head, like, do this. Like, your soul is never going to be like that. Um, but you'll know by the joy of it. You'll know by, like, how you feel. Like, when I'm talking on a video or I'm working with clients, like, I, I, I feel joy in my heart. I feel like life is amazing. I'm not thinking about other things while I'm doing it either. That's another thing I feel like about soul purpose is, like, when you're really just in the moment and you're just, like, being and it becomes, like, you know, like, this meditation almost because it's really like a time when your mind isn't wandering to what you're going to do later or, or like it's like oh yeah does that make sense does that make sense you guys um danny alvarez says i'm obsessed with helping others get to their goals and music not sure how that combines well do you teach music because I, that seems like how it combines um, or it could also be like maybe you're meant to be some type of other coach or, you know, counseling person or, or some type of helping profession. And then music is a hobby. Because I know for me, I love music too. And I used to think like I wanted to be a rock star and all that. But I realized like, you know, it just, it was hard for me to learn the guitar. Not that like, like hard work is great. It's great to work hard. But um, like it wasn't like, 
I wanted to be doing that all the time. Like I wanted to be doing courses more and I started to want to be reading books more. And like I love playing the guitar though and I'll always play it. But um, I think at this point in my life, I'm not meant to like be on a stage playing the guitar. I'm meant to be doing this because I think in a way I'll actually help more people and like it's more joyous for me to do this. But like I'll always do that. You know what I mean, Danny? So like you can have both. Like you can somehow combine them and be some type of helping music teaching person or you can be a helping person and always do your music. Um, Astral says, I learn all the time, I should work more. <laughs> oh no, just do it, don't, just, you don't have to work, don't do it, just learn. <laughs> um, I love that, yeah, no, me too. And I, I spend a lot of time learning new things and it's great. Zach says, you are awesome, you're awesome. Anyways, I love playing and singing like comforting others. Yeah, he says, well, that's great. It probably ties into your purpose. And don't let, like, society or other people, especially your family, do not let your family tell you what is your purpose. Because they don't know, okay? Only you know. And nobody else knows, not even me, I don't know. Only you and your soul know what your purpose is. And... And, you know, it might seem like some crazy thing. Like, it might be like, I am going to be, like, super famous. Yeah, like you're saying, not being famous. But, like, maybe, like, your, your dream is to be, like, totally famous. Or, like, doing some crazy thing, like, astronauting or, like, whatever. I don't know. But, and, like, everybody around you is like, you, you, you can't do that. You'll never do that. Nobody does that. You're too old to do that. You're too young to do that. Um, no. Fuck off. Only you know what your soul purpose is. But, like, by taking time each day to just relax and connect with your soul, and um, you can do that by just asking, like, soul, I want to know what my purpose is. And then just, like, shutting the fuck up in your mind for, like, one minute and hearing what comes. Okay? And you'll be guided. As soon as you ask, it is given. So, like, Danny, or all you people that are watching this live stream, um, you've asked, you're probably wondering, well, what's my sole purpose? Or maybe you already know what it is, but you're just still figuring out how to like turn it into like what you're actually doing. Um, it'll all line up and you, you'll be guided what steps you need to take, but then you need to take them because like you could know what your purpose is for like a long time and not do anything because of what everybody else says or what everybody else will think. And like, you'll be like, Oh my God, what if I do a Facebook live and people laugh at me and then you never do it. But like you have something seriously important to teach that will help and benefit lots of people, but you don't do it. And that is the death of your soul. <laughs> um, no, it, your soul, your soul's not harsh. Your, your soul is never harsh like that. Your soul would never say, it's the death of you. No, your soul is infinitely patient and loves you. Um, but, yeah, you want to do those things that you are guided to do, even though they might feel scary at first. And you might have to shed a lot of the fears of what other people are going to think of you or who you might lose. Because a lot of people might start to think you're totally weird and unfollow you if you're doing some purpose that involves, you know, teaching some new age concept or, you know, something that's, that's like you're a creator. You're, you're creating something out of thin air. You're creating your empire. And people are probably going to think you're weird as fuck for a little bit. And they probably think I am. But I can't ever stop because I know that this is my sole purpose. Oh, Danny says, yeah, what if I fail and people say I told you so? Yeah. Well, and here's the thing. You might, like, fail, so like, a few times. But it's, like, what you do after. Like, you keep picking yourself up and doing it again because you know it's what you're meant to be doing because that's what you feel in your soul. Um, or do you just then give up? Right. And I've given up tons of times. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like saying that like I've never failed and given up. I've definitely done all of it. But I'm in this place right now where it's like, like I've, I've, well, I haven't really failed that much, but like I've given up a lot where I've just said, fuck this shit. I just want to be a normal person and blend in and not share my message. And then like I just start to like, ex 
explode because I have so much inside that's like just like begging to be expressed. <laughs> so like it's better to just do it without the fear. And I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? Okay, people are going to say, I told you so. And then what? Maybe you feel like a little bit sad for like a little bit. But you, you always get over it. There's nothing that can ever really harm you. Your soul is untouchable. Anyways, I hope that all made sense. What do you all think your soul purpose is? if you're willing to share it with me. Well, I know a little bit about Danny already, but what about the rest of you? What do you think your soul purpose is? Or what, not what do you think, what do you know deep within your soul that you were born for? And it's gonna be that thing that makes you feel the most joy. And it, it probably will help other people too. I mean, not necessarily, but like, it will help them in some way and it will help you. It's like a mutually beneficial thing. But most importantly, it's what brings you joy. I've given up, but then somehow it comes back to me. Yeah, you can't really like give up on your soul. <laughs> you could try, you could say, go away soul. I don't wanna do that right now. And your soul will creep up and say, hey, you want to do this thing again? Are you ready yet? And you'll be like, fine. Try it again. Um, anyways, yeah, so I think that's all I wanted to talk about. If nobody else is going to tell me their purpose in life, tell me. Tell me or else I'll never go live again. Tell me what your purpose is in life right now or else I'll never do another video again. If you don't tell me right now what your life purpose is. Oh, 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 Brett Valdez just told me. Okay, I'm gonna read it. I was born to make sure my nephew gets through this life in the best way possible. My North Node is in Taurus for the longest time. I was suicidal and big for a reason, and then he came along. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. So with the South Node in Scorpio there, you had to deal with those issues of life and death pretty early on I'm thinking and now you've mastered it and you're helping others that's awesome it's not a really an easy task so I pride you on that good for you from my soul to your soul good work Brett um anyone else so if you're interested in Working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I do have this amazing program that I'm offering right now, but I'm not going to be offering it for very long. Um, it's called the Joy of Living Package. And the reason why I called it the Joy of Living Package is because I want to help you get to this place where you're following your soul's purpose, and then joy is a natural byproduct of that. So I'm offering, and I actually don't really do astrology readings anymore, but there is an astrology soul integration reading included in this package that I'm offering, as well as two theta healing sessions where we can get to the root beliefs of why you're not living in more joy. And um, these produce miraculous results. I mean, I have testimonials that I can share as well on that. Um, the theta healing has totally changed my life. So I'm offering that and I'm also offering just some sessions on soul guidance with me. So if this is something you're interested, I'm uh, interested in, I'm going to be posting the link below and I'm going to be talking about it for a few more days, but spots are filling up quickly and I don't want to, you know, let too many people in this close to me because it's really like you get all of me for the six weeks. It's a six week program. And um, it's just like me combining all of my talents into this perfect package for you because I'm so ready to be of service more to you guys and, and share more of who I actually am, which is the astrology and the theta healing and just my soul wisdom. So I've included it all in this package and it's fucking awesome. It's the best thing I've ever done. So if you're interested in that, you can message me about any questions and I'll be dropping the link below if you just know because your soul knows and you want to just sign up right away. I'm going to be posting that. And yeah, or I do offer theta healing sessions and, you know, maybe just for the fun of it, like I'm going to offer astrology readings again as well. 
because I love astrology and I want to do readings again. So I just decided that right now, I'll pull off the readings again, but you do also get a reading included in my special package. So if anyone wants this, and you should, if you want to get living in joy, um, that is available from me now, but not for long. Um, Astral says, I think my sole purpose is to show people unconditional love is real. My North Node is in Pisces in the seventh house. Yes, that is so beautiful. You totally hit it on the head with that. And I would also say with North Node in the seventh house, I have this too. I have North Node in Scorpio in my seventh house. Um, North Node in the seventh house is always going to be about relating to partners and people. And I'm like, so in your relationships, like your romantic relationships, it's, it's going to be about showing that person unconditional love because the Virgo South node tendency is going to be like um, overly critical of everyone and yourself. So, yeah. Brett says, yep, it's been a hard road, but finding your reason is the best feeling. It is, and it just makes you want to be alive. And it makes you love life. And, you know, when those feelings of hopelessness or pointlessness of it all, or, you know, why am I even alive? When those come up, you move through them because you know, wait a sec, I have a purpose here that is stronger than any bullshit. And eventually you get so strong in that, then there becomes no bullshit. Or like the bullshit that does come seems so insignificant compared to your purpose and the power of your soul. Brett says, you're a natural with astrology. Oh, thank you. Well, you too. Anyways, thanks for joining me, you guys. And sign up for my program. Spots are filling up fast. And this is the most in-depth personal one-on-one -on -one thing that I'm going to be offering for a while because it really, it's including all of me. And I'm really excited about it. It's going to be fun. So Message me if you're interested or you want to sign up. I'm going to post the link below. Love you all. Thanks for joining me on this video. Bye, you guys. Peace out.